continue working on partial fractions. So now we're going to move on to the following example. In this example, I give you the following fraction. I give you, hey, we have five x squared plus 20x plus six divided by, take a look at the denominator, everybody. Here you have x cubed plus two x squared plus x. Well, well, what do I have here? I have x cubed plus 2x squared plus x on the denominator. What is our very first step? Our first step is to write this guy in factor form. So factor your denominator. First of all, you can factor out x because these three terms, they all have x in common. So let us factor out x. If I factor out x, I left with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, we already saw factorization before from algebra. I'm just going to copy down the numerator here because we haven't made any adjustment to the numerator. We, the only thing we did we just factor out the denominator, 20x plus 6. Well, OK, what should I do here? I need to break this guy down into different fractions. What are you going to do? You're going to separate this, split this fraction into three fractions, three partial fractions. The very first partial fraction has denominator x, the second partial fraction has this guy is x plus one squared. x squared plus two x plus one is nothing but x plus one squared. Let me write a note here for you. Just a quick note. When you have x cubed plus two x squared plus x, and you factor out x, you left with x squared plus 2x plus 1. This guy is x. You're looking for two numbers. Their product is 1, and their sum is 2. So it is x plus 1 times x plus 1. So it can be written as x times x plus 1 to the second power. From algebra, you remember that we have the following. So x cubed plus 2x squared plus x is nothing but x times x plus 1 to the second power from algebra. Well, so now we're dealing with this fraction, ugly fraction. This fraction breaks into three fractions. The very first fraction has denominator x. The second fraction has denominator x plus 1. And the last fraction has denominator x plus 1 squared. OK, very good. So far, I formed the denominators. Just a quick note. I'm going to write another note for you here. If it was. 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 divided by x times x plus 1 to the third, you're going to break it down into four partial fractions. The very first fraction has denominator x. The second fraction has denominator x plus 1. The third fraction has denominator x plus 1 squared. And the last fraction has the denominator x plus 1 to the third. Just a quick note for you. The way that we break this up follows the same rule. This is the linear expression 
and this guy is another linear expression. It has different exponents. So you're going to repeat each of these fractions on the denominator. You're going to start by having x, then the first linear fraction, x plus one, then the linear fraction next raised to two, and the linear fraction raised to three. And if it was four, if it was four, you're not going to stop here. You're going to add x plus one to the fourth. If it was x plus one to the fifth, it's going to be plus x plus one to the fifth. You're going to continue this process. That's the important part. So since we have two as the exponent, you're going to stop at x plus one to the second power. Guys, note that this is just a note. So if you see an example, a question of this form, it means that you have to continue and repeat this process until you get to the maximum exponent, which is five. Okay, what about the numerators? Well, the first numerator, since on the denominator you have a linear expression, it is just going to be a constant like a. For this guy, a linear expression, a constant like b. And finally here, since you have a linear expression, it's going to be a constant like c. Okay, now your job is to find a, b, and c as before. Let me erase this part of the board so we have enough space to write the whole thing down. Very well. So we started by factoring the denominator. We created our partial fractions. Our job is to identify a, b, and c. So what are we going to do? We're going to take common denominator for these three fractions and then set it equal to this original fraction. So the common denominator between these is not x times x plus one times x plus one squared. It is just x times x plus one to the second power. So this guy becomes a times x plus one to the second, x times x plus one to the second plus. This guy already has x plus one. So to create x plus one squared, you're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x plus one. And finally, this guy doesn't have x. So remember that here you have to multiply by x. So let us keep x as it is. If this guy doesn't have any x, so it's going to be x plus one squared times x times x. So here you have a and b, and then c, cx. So we are constructing the common denominator for these three fractions, which is x times x plus one squared. So the common denominator, this is a note for you, common denominator is x times x plus one to the second power. This is your common denominator. You do not multiply by this number. This is x plus one, but you already have the largest exponent for x plus one. So you're going to copy down x plus one and x times x plus one to the second power is your common denominator. So again, this fraction is equal to a times x plus one to the second, x times x plus one to the second. Plus, this guy doesn't have x. It also doesn't have exponent two. So you're going to multiply the numerator by x plus one times x or x times x plus one, x plus one times x. And it already has x plus one written here. And the last fraction, it doesn't have x. So you're going to multiply by x. Okay, so far so good. A, B, and then C. Okay, so if you take the common denominator between these three fractions and set it equal to the original fraction, you're going to have the following x 
times x plus one to the second, a times x plus one to the second, plus d times x times x plus one, plus c times x, really well. So this fraction is equal to this fraction, or in other words, this is this fraction. They are equivalent to each other, they're the same. 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 divided by x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. The denominators are the same. The numerators must be the same. Very good. So 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 is equal to, here you have a times x plus 1 to the second, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1, plus b times x squared plus x plus c times x C times x. Very good. Let us distribute a into parentheses, b into parentheses, and see what do we have. We get a x squared to a x plus a to a x plus a. And let us distribute b into parentheses, b x squared plus b x plus c x. Perfect. And let's copy down this quadratic expression on the left. 5x squared plus 20x plus 6. Now we're going to set the quadratic terms equal to each other, the linear terms equal to each other, and try to solve for a, b, and c. Step by step. So here you have x squared. Am I right? x squared, ax squared, bx squared, and on the left-hand side, we have 5x squared. So what's the meaning of that? It means that 5x squared is equal to ax squared plus bx squared. So far, so good. This is my first relation between a, b, and 5. So this relation says, Y is A plus B. A plus, so keep this one. This is your first relation. Now take a look at this. Let me see if I have any other color to use. Yes, this is good. On the left, you have 20X. On the right, you have 2AX and BX. So what's the meaning of that? It means that 20X, is the same as 2ax plus bx. 2ax plus bx. So what's the meaning of that? Well, it means that 20 is 2a plus b. You're constructing system of equations to help us solve these for A and B and also C. And here, remember that here you have CX. So let me copy down CX. I forgot about this little thing here. So CX plus CX. Okay. Let's don't forget about this. It says 20 is equal to 2AX plus BX plus CX. So here we go. Bx. So we don't need any x anymore. So let's just write down the numbers. 20 is 2a plus b plus b plus c plus b plus c. Very well. So what else do I have? Um, it says six 
is equal to a. The only constant left is a, am I right? So a is equal to six. We already saw for a. We know that a is equal to six. Okay, nice. A is equal to six. So what's the meaning of that? It means that I can put that into the first equation and solve for B, which is going to be negative one. So since five is A plus B, A plus B, well, by plug in six for A, five is equal to six plus B, and B becomes negative one. So B is negative one. That's cool. We found A, we found B. We can easily plug those into the last equation and solve for C. We know that 20 is equal to two times A. A is six plus B. B is negative one. And finally, plus C. Okay, that's cool. So 20 is equal to 12 minus one plus our C. So our 20 is 11 plus C. So C is equal to nine. Very good. So our fractions, our partial, partial fractions, are going to be, well, six divided by X, negative one divided by X plus one, and nine divided by X plus one squared. This is the partial fraction that we were looking for.